Now, as I said, there are many hosting providers. I will start with hosting the Node.js application and I will use Heroku to host it. A quite popular service, but definitely not the only one. So let's visit Heroku's webpage. And there we can sign up for free and we can also host the application in the basic requirements we have here for free as well. If you have a real application, you of course might want to check out their pricing and probably choose a different option than the free one because there you have a lot of limitations. For example, your server goes in sleep mode after 30 minutes of no requests basically and it then restarts for the next incoming request which of course makes this specific request a bit slower and in general it's great for testing and playing around for a real application you will probably need a paid account there but here we can go with the free one and once you did sign up you should see a screen that looks something like this where you can create a new app give it any name you want here I'll name it a cad Mern. choose a region where this will be hosted for me US is fine and click create app. Now this sets up an app here. You can ignore these steps here. Now for the deployment method, I will use Heroku Git. And that means that you need Git installed on your machine. So in case you're not using Git, Git is a version control system which allows you to control your source code, create different snapshots and so on. And you can use it for that. And I would recommend using it in bigger projects. But if you don't have it yet, you at least should install it to use it for deploying to Heroku. On the official Git page, you'll learn all about the installation. You can simply download it for your operating system, walk through the installer, and check out the docs if you're having the issues with that. It should be pretty straightforward though. Once you got Git installed, you also need to install the Heroku CLI. So we can click on that link to learn how that works. And then just simply download the installer here or run this command or for Windows or Linux, use your options, and then simply install that CLI onto your machine as well. So that at the end, you're able to run both Heroku as a command, as well as Git as a command in your command prompt or terminal. So then let's run Heroku login first. And I will do this here in my backend project. Simply run Heroku login, go through that login process thereafter. And once you are logged in, continue to the next step here, you need to initialize your project as a Git repository and then run this command to basically connect this Heroku app to your local Git repository so that you're later able to push code to your Heroku app and run it there. So let's do that. Let's run git init here in this backend project. Now important, also add a .git ignore file here and ignore node modules. This ensures that when you control something with Git, the node modules folder is not controlled because uploading this to the backend would take super long and Heroku will automatically install all dependencies your project needs. It will automatically have a look at package.json and install all these dependencies. So it will create the node modules folder automatically on the backend. So make sure you add this and then simply run this command here Heroku git remote and so on. And once you did this, run these first two commands and you can provide a different commit message here too if you want, by the way. So let's first of all run git add and then git commit prepared for deployment. Now before we push it to Heroku, make sure that in your package.json file, you also tweak the start script here to just node app.js because Heroku will execute this to then later, well, start your node application. And we need to also ensure one other thing. Remember these environment variables? They were used by Nodemon. Now we're not using Nodemon on Heroku, we're using Node there. We shouldn't use Nodemon there, it's not a production ready tool. So these environment variables would not be used right now. They would all be missing. Therefore, our app definitely wouldn't work. For example, connecting to the database would already fail because these environment variables at the moment on Heroku simply wouldn't be provided. So to fix this, we have to go to Heroku, can keep this page open, but then here, op open this overview part in a new tab, this overview part of your project. There you can learn more about the project and under settings, you can now set so-called config vars. And these are your environment variables. 
And here you want to create these environment variables you have in your node.mon.json file as well. So add db user here and enter the value you have here in node.mon.json as well, like this. Also add db password thereafter and provide the correct value here. And of course use the value you want to use for production. So if you created a different user for production here on MongoDB Atlas, enter the username and password of your production user here of course, because these are the values that will be used in production. So db name is the next key I add here. And for a db name, I indeed want to use that special database I prepared for production. I named it Mern Prod. So I will also name it Mern Prod here and click Add. The Google API key also should be provided. And here I also want to use my production ready one, which I can quickly get from my front end here because there I already did enter it. So this is my production Google API key. Let's enter it here. And last but not least, we need to provide our JWT key value here. And this is my production secret key or whatever you want to name it. Click add. So now we have all these environment variables set up and with that we should be able to run our application. At least almost. One thing would still not work. On MongoDB Atlas, keep in mind that there, under network access, we're allowing our local IP address but not the IP address of our Heroku deployment. And of course, that will be the server who wants to connect to the database in the future. Now, one important thing to keep in mind here is that Heroku uses dynamic IP ranges and you can learn more about how you could get a fixed, a static IP here with the help of a certain add-on or if you have a private space, so a premium paid plan in the end, how you could set up a static IP here. For our local free sandbox environment, I will simply add an IP address here and allow access from anywhere. Now, of course, you could say that's a bit insecure, but keep in mind, this allows anyone to communicate to my database, but that person will still need a valid user and a password for that user. So you still need these credentials. So it's just one extra layer of security, which I gave up here, but you could restrict that if you have a static IP here in the free sandbox, we just don't have that. So I will open that up to everyone. And once this is done, once everyone can talk to our database, we can finally try deploying this to Heroku. So let's wait for this to finish. So with this finished, let's go back to our instructions here on how to deploy and let's try this git push Heroku master command here. However, before we push it, make sure you also git add again to reflect your changes to package.json, changed starting script. Otherwise, you will push your old code, your old snapshot, where we still used nodemon for starting this up. And thereafter, let's try this git push Heroku master command. So this will now deploy this application, will install node modules there, will automatically detect that you're using node because you have a package.json file, will build everything and in the end it will launch your application. Now let's wait for this process to finish here. And with it finished, it gives you a URL where your page in the end is hosted or where your application is running. Of course, you can also connect a custom domain and so on, and you can learn all about that in the official Heroku docs if you want to do that. With that, let's visit our page here, and eventually you will see that you get an error. Now, this error makes sense. If we have a look at our app.js file, we see that we're listening to port 5000. Now, this was good during development, but now it isn't anymore. On Heroku, we want to use a different port. Thankfully, Heroku gives you a default environment variable, which provides the port on which your application is served. You can just enter process.env.port here, port all caps, and just use 5000 as a fallback value here. So if that is not provided, we will use this, i.e. during development. If that is provided, which Heroku will do for us, then this will be used instead. And then our application will be served on a port Heroku wants to serve it on and therefore it will be reachable. So with this, let's add this change. 
add at port nth. And then let's repeat this git push Heroku master command. So this will now update our application on the server with this new version of it. We'll replace the old one with it and we'll start it, of course. And hopefully then it will work. And indeed, if I now visit slash API slash users, I get back an empty array, which makes sense because we have no users yet in our production database. So our API seems to work, seems to be up and running. Now let's test this with our React app and let's deploy the React app as well.